So anyway, that was exciting, and uh, so we're excited about the stuff that God's doing. Amen. It's great seeing all the services getting filled up. I know we kind of we had one service of, believe it or not, I can't believe it, but we we were jamming into one service, 110 people into this room and downstairs. And when COVID hit, we couldn't do that anymore. And we're spread out over three services, but it's going pretty good. And I think it's a great opportunity to fill up all three services. Amen. Because the more people we can gather up to follow Christ along with us, the more impact we can have on our community. Amen. How many guys know that uh, the north side of Oneida needs Church on the Rock and that Oneida needs every church in this city and we're working together as a team to get the gospel out because how many of you guys know Jesus is the answer, amen? And we were created to do good works in Him. After we got saved, that's what God created us to do, more good works in Him. And so uh, we're excited about that. So you guys ready to get into the Word today? I'll let you stay. I won't make you stand up. We're up, down, up, down, up, down. Say this with me. Say, this is the Word of God. I'll do what it says to do. I'll say what it says to say. This is the pure, living power of God. My heart is open and receptive to your word this morning, Lord. Amen. So did you like the keyboard, Val? That, I haven't been sleeping very well at night because of that keyboard. And my wife said she... <laughs> they could hear it hitting the bottom, yeah. Um, it's funny because I was talking to my sister and she asked me about that because <laughs> it was that way before I was married. So um, we have to stop playing the piano before 5 a.m. Just kidding. <laughs> I knew. Um, hey, I want to talk to you guys. Did we do our confession? Oh, we did. Okay. I want to I talk to you guys today about not being afraid to believe God for a miracle. Amen. How many of you guys know that God still does miracles? Then he does them all the time, you know? And as Christians, you know, God walks, wants us to walk by faith. You know, that's how we got born again, right? Um, it says in Ephesians 2.8, it says, For by the grace you've been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are all his workmanship created in Christ for what good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in him, right? So we got saved be, um, through faith in Christ. I shared a few months ago, we did a, a whole series of messages on, uh, on the gospel. And we talked about how um, none of us without Christ could ever perform well enough to be righteous. It's absolutely impossible. And I kind of had this example that was a little cruel, but it worked. And uh, it was, I had some of the little kids uh, stand up here. And then I had some middle-aged folks that could jump, Roger and Dennis. And uh, some older folks like me over here. And I said, all right, guys touch the light. And uh, Roger did it pretty easily, I think. You were in that line, right? Yeah, you and Dennis did that pretty easy. But poor little Isaac, I mean, he's he's down here and he's just like, yeah, it's just cruel, you know. I actually said to him, I can't love you unless you touch the light. That's what I said as an example, you know. And uh, they were pretty happy, I believe. And then I said, okay, everybody touch the beam. There were very few. I don't know if anybody touched the beam. Uh, touch the beam. It's because, you know, that standard of measure is too high. We, nobody can reach it. Amen? And, and it, uh, God doesn't love us for what we do. If that was the case, he wouldn't be able to love all of us, any of us. He loves us for who we are in Christ. Amen? So God loves Isaac, whether he can hit the beam or not. He loves Roger and Dennis, even, they, even if they can hit the beam. And, and so, you know, that's kind of the bottom line. We're, we're saved by faith in Christ Jesus. That's how we got, that's how we got born again. Amen? Um, Romans 3, 7, or 27 through 28 says this. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded by the law or of works? No, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. It's just saying the same thing, basically. It says, listen, you know, um, you, you can't, nobody can boast about anything. You know, I, I read the Bible like five hours a day. That's why I'm saved. Or, you know, I'm in constant prayer. That's why I get to go to church. Or we used to have tapes. We don't do those anymore. But I've got teaching tapes, you know, hundreds of teaching tapes. That's why I'm a Christian. You know, I've got uh, bumper stickers all over my car. You know, that shows me that I'm super Christian. No, <laughs> none of that stuff does anything. We do that not because we have to. We do that out of love for God. Amen? And we do that not to prove that we're good enough because we're not. We do that because we love Him and we just want to be closer to Him. Amen? You know, me and Amy find times on the fly, or we'll just cancel stuff on the fly to go do stuff with our grandchild. Because we love them. Amen? 
or and we did the same thing with our kids or even my parents you know we did it we spent time with them not because we had to we spent time with them because we love them you know I don't go to church because I have to no I'm going to church because I have to because that's what we do we go to church and I sit right there and that's my seat and if anybody touches it it's not going to be good it's all going down you know it's that's not it at all I go to church because I love God and I like getting together with people amen to love God together and we can do so much more together, you know. How many of you guys have dinners together with your family? Isn't that fun? And, and how not fun is it just to eat by yourself all the time? It's great. You know, whenever I'm thinking of, like, having some, doing a cookout or whatever, my first thought is, you know, who, who am I going to invite, you know? And come and have fun together as a family. And that's what we do at church, isn't it? We come together to read the Word. We come together to pray. We come together to encourage one another in the faith. And we come together to impact our community with the things that God has called us to do. Amen? So that's what it's all about. But in the meantime, the Bible says that just like we got saved, he's called us to continue to live in him the same way. It says in Colossians 2, 6 and 7, As you therefore have received Jesus Christ, which is being saved, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as you've been taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Amen? So we're born again by faith, and God calls us, as we're born again, to walk in faith. Amen? And what's really awesome about God is that with God, all things are possible. Have any of you ever looked at an impossible situation and you're like, I just don't see how this is going to possibly work, right? We, the reason that we, is, we have hope as Christians is because we know that God can do the impossible. Have any of you here ever been uh, healed like miraculously healed, and you're like, wow, that was like impossible. God did a pretty cool thing in that, you know. One of our members was sharing with me uh, um, years and years ago, probably 18 years ago, he was talking about how he had um, been in a lot of back pain. I think he was in an accident or something. He was in a ton of back pain. And um, he said that um, one of our, our, our people that go to church here, um, asked to pray with him, and then they just put, and the doctor had prescribed all these really heavy drugs for his back, and he just really wasn't comfortable with that. And he said that the, this person prayed for them, and they felt God touch him, and they were instantly healed, and they never went back to the doctor again. I mean, uh, for that situation. I mean, that's just amazing. So God still does the impossible. And, and what's interesting, too, is the Bible says in uh, Hebrews 11, 6, I'm going to read it quick. It says, But without faith, it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek God. Amen? The Bible here says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Why? Because of two things. We need to believe that God is. That means that he's alive, that he's real. We're not talking about Santa Claus. We're not talking about the Easter Bunny. God forbid, we're not talking about the tooth fairy. The rates have gone up. And thank goodness our kids are older because we're paying out more and more for teeth, right? We're, we're talking about God, the creator of the universe, amen, who is real. He says, believe that he is, right, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, whenever you're preaching and, read, and, and teaching the word, you've got to be careful that you don't fall into ditches, okay? Because as human beings, we tend to live in the extremes when God has called us to live in the equator in a balanced situation, right? So yes, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Is that saying that you need to push and strive and push and strive to be rewarded by God? No. It's just saying that God rewards us when we diligently seek him because he loves us. You know, how about this? We're, ch we're God's children. We have, we're uh, guys here, you know, children of God. Women here, children of God, amen? And, and you know what? God wants to take care of us, right? And so what's interesting is God has these promises in his word. No matter what you're going through, God has a promise for you. And, um, and God uses these promises to give us hope. You know, um, I talked about this scripture last week, 1 Peter 1.3. It says, and his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. And watch this right here. By what he has given us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through, love, or through lust. His divine power has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness through these exceedingly great and precious promises. Amen. God's power is, uh, is there to help us as Christians, amen, to be more godly, 
to live life victoriously. You know, it's not like the, the outlets have a mind of their own. You know, if you took a, an outlet and you plugged in, you know, a, 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 a computer and the outlet's like, oh, this is a computer. I guess I'll power that up. You know, or you plugged in a light. And, Whoa, okay, that's a light. I guess I'll power that up. Or we'll plug Pastor Jeff's sleep machine into it. Oh, we're not powering that one up. You know, it, it's not like that. When you plug into the power, right, what you need is in there to help you do what you need to do, right? And God's the same way. You know, he has a will for our lives. And when we plug into that power and we know what his will is for that situation, we can walk in faith and trust in that power. And how many guys know there's a lot of power when it comes to electricity? The Bible says the same power that raised Lazarus from the dead is the same power that's alive in us. And when I was a kid, I had this habit of, like, my parents would say, you know, don't do this. But sometimes I would do it when nobody was looking just because I wanted to try it. And that doesn't always work out well for you, you know. And I remember one time in particular, my mom said, you know, don't put a knife or a fork in the toaster. Well, we all know why, right? That's a problem. I mean, if I had hair, just, whoo, there it goes, you know. So, you know, you don't do that. I remember one night, I was like maybe eight or nine years old. I won't forget. I remember thinking, well, there's a power outlet there. That's not the same as a toaster. I, what would happen if I put a fork in that? Unfortunately, I found out it wasn't good, which is why I struggle sometimes. You know, but um, I'm just kidding. You know, it's like God's power is there for us, amen, and he has a will. Now, you can't, you can't like, like, is Nigel's here? Okay, I picked on your first service. I don't know if you knew that or not, so I'll just do it in second service, too. One of Nigel's favorite um, lunches or dinners is Chinese food. It's his favorite. Mexican. He hates Chinese food. Nigel hates Chinese food. We've been in bands together. We've been tra- we toured around, traveled around a little bit together. The whole band has been like, let's go here. Let's go to Chinese. And Nigel's like, not doing it. He just refused to do it. I, I could sit down and have a conversation with Nigel and say right now, and say, hey, Nigel, after, um, after uh, church, I think it'd be cool to spend some time together. Let's go out for Chinese. I know what he's going to say. He's, you're too far short of a Happy Meal. You know that's not going to happen. But if I said, hey, let's go get some Mexican, he'd be like, yeah, sure, you're paying, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, it's the same way when we're having relationship and fellowship with God. We can't be like, okay, God, you know that person that's at work right now that's been bugging me for the past 10 years? Could you slap them around for me? Thank you. In faith, hallelujah. We can't, we, it's not going to happen. It's like Chinese food for Nigel. You know what I'm saying? We need to know what God's will is, and that's why the promises of God in the Word are important. Amen? And what's interesting, too, is that um, I think I want to skip down to here is it's, it's one thing to know, like, for instance, if, if, if I asked you, you know, does God do this, all of you would probably say generally yes, you know. But it's a little bit harder when God, when we're asking God for ourselves personally, does God want this for me personally? And I've talked about it a few times. I'm not going to read the scripture, but it's in Matthew 16, 13 through 20. And, um, boy, that is a heck of a subwoofer next door. We need to get these babies hooked up so that we can compete with that. That's the auto place next door. That's awesome. That's what happens when you have adult ADHD. You just can't, you know, you just lose it. Okay, back to church, okay? Uh, I don't remember what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's different when it's a personal thing. You know what I'm saying? And in Matthew 16, 13 through 20, um, Jesus says to all the disciples, we'll just say that you guys are all the disciples, you know, who do, who do men say that I am? And it's some, it's some to John the Baptist, some this, some that. Easy question. You know, hey guys at Church on the Rock, what do you think the world thinks about this? Well, we think with this, we think that. Easy thing to answer. Next question, take it a little bit deeper and say, what do you guys think? Right? So he says to the disciples, hey, what do you think? Who do you think I am? Right? And then there's this loud mouth, well, maybe not loud mouth, but a little overconfident dude named Peter who speaks up and says, you are the Christ. You are the Son of God. And, and so it's a personal decision. Peter says, I don't care what you all think. This is what I know. This is what I believe. I believe, Peter, I believe that Jesus, you are the Son of God. That's a, that's a different kind of faith, isn't it? That's a deeper faith. And so when you're going through something and you're believing God for a miracle, you have to be able to answer that question. What do you believe? What is God telling you about this situation? Because 2 plus 2 in the spiritual realm doesn't always equal 4. Amen? And if you start coming up with whatever like that, it's just not the way it works, right? So, like, I know a few years ago, 
talked about it a little bit, but man, a few years ago. It's funny when you get older. A few years ago, it's like it's like 15 years, and that's 20 years, and then you get to be 60 or 70. It's like a few years ago, 60 years ago. But anyway, a few years ago, we'll say 10, 15, give or take a few. Uh, no, it was about 10 years ago. I I started having some severe pain in my lower stomach. It was not good. Out of nowhere, it came on pretty quick. And, I, and I'm not really a, uh, a go-to-the-doctor kind of person. You know, I go to my annual checkups because I'm supposed to be faithful with my body, right? So I go to my annual checkups. It's interesting because recently my doctor said, well, Jeff, you're almost 50, so now you have to have two checkups a year. Is that like a rule or something? So now every six months. It, so like when I'm like 70, is it like quarterly? And like when you're like 90, is it like weekly? Or you get like 120, is it like daily? Like so, somebody's making some money off of this. But anyway... I'm, okay, you know, so I went to I went to the emergency room at three o'clock in the morning. I'm in pain. I mean, I'm hurting. And um, they gave me a pill, and they said this will probably work over time. And a day goes by, and three days go by, and I'm not getting any relief. I can't sit down because it hurts. I can't lay down and rest because it hurts. Like if I'm gonna go to bed at night, I lay down and for three hours I'm just staring at the ceiling. I'm in pain. And God gave me a promise. I was praying about this. I was like, Lord, you know, what's going on? You know, what, what do I need to, to, to do? And the promise that he gave me for the situation I was going through is in uh, Hebrews 10, 35 through 36. And I read this scripture, and on the inside, I'm like, God, that's for me. You ever read a scripture like that? Like, it could be for anybody, but you're like, wait a second. No, I know that that, 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 that scripture is for me. And he's given you a scripture to hold on to as you kind of go through stuff. And the scripture was Hebrews 10, 35 through 36. And it said this, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which is great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. I wasn't real happy about the endurance piece. You know, I wanted to receive the promise piece was the best part of it, but the endurance piece, I'm like, what does that mean? And, and uh, man... Three days later, I went back to the emergency room in Syracuse, thinking they could do something, and they couldn't do anything. And um, I started working with my doctor, and he gave me a medication that was starting to help a little bit. And, and then I had a conversation with my dad and found out that he had the same issue around the same age that I did. And he started talking to me about my diet, about staying away from certain foods. And, and he was a runner, and I couldn't run because I got a knee that, that yells at me once in a while. And, and uh, so I started swimming long distances and doing things like that to help my body, you know. And I'll never forget one day I was, I was uh, after about three months, I was walking to my parents' house, and just for like three minutes, the pain went away. Have you ever been like an excruciating pain, and then it just goes away for just a little bit, and you're like, Whew. you know, it just it went away. I'm like, wow, that feels so good. And then it came right back. You know, and uh, it was it was rough. And then I, I asked God, you know, what do you want me to do? And he told me to fast from TV. You know, and I don't watch a lot of TV. I, I really stick to sports and then Star Trek, The Next Generation. I guess me and Amy are just some of those HD build houses and shows or whatever. But, uh, you know, Next Generation, um, Captain Picard, best captain. Sorry, don't care what you think. Anyway, uh, that's, what I, that's my diet of TV. I don't watch a whole lot of TV. I like to watch sports and things like that. So that wasn't a big deal. He said, don't watch any more TV for a while. And then um, he told me to start listening to the Bible at night. So that's what I would do. I'd listen to the Bible all night long uh, in my head headphones. He told me to look for healing scriptures and speak them. So I spoke healing scriptures into an app. I could tell the app how many times to listen to it, and it would just roll through all night long. And um, after about six months or eight months, it, it got a little bit better. And finally, I got to the point where you know, um, I don't have that going on. It might hit me for, I might have a flare up for a couple hours. I just get right back to the scriptures, make sure that I'm sticking to my diet, what God said to do, make sure that I'm, uh, my father said to do, make sure that I'm sticking to my medications. And praise God, I got through that. And, and it wasn't a one thing. It wasn't like a, a, a nece- it was also listening to my doctor. It was also taking the medications he told me to took, take. It was also like doing what my dad had said to do as far as eating, you know, less spaghetti. Oh, crap. Less pizza. Oh, no. You know, that type of stuff. But, you know, God, but, but through that whole time, I kept holding on to that scripture. You know, not, not to hold God accountable to it, because I knew what God was going to do, but to hold me accountable to have hope that it's coming, that after uh, that um, he says, for you have need for endurance, you know, and he helped me through that, you know, and, and so 
that's just healing, but there's all sorts of things, the miracles that we're believing God for. And we need to just trust God for these miracles. And the first thing we need to do, honestly, is we really need to ask Him for a promise in the Word. Show me something in the Word, Lord, that's going to help me through this. I went to a, a woman a few years, a few years ago, a um, hospital room of a woman who was dying about 10 years ago. And um, I was all loaded up with scriptures for her, promises for her. And, you know, I sat down to, to just begin to pray. And when I prayed with her, I kind of felt like I was sitting like next to Nigel. I felt like I wanted Chinese, but God was like, the Chinese isn't going to work in this situation. I felt the Lord say, Jeff, she's got cancer. She's tired. She just wants to go home. Just let her go home. You know? I found out after talking with her that she was afraid to die. She was a Christian. She was born again, but she was afraid of death. We talked through some things. I could feel peace at the room. And then just a few days later, she passed away and went to heaven. Amen? That's how God answered that prayer. Do I believe that God wants people to live long? Absolutely. But sometimes things happen that I don't understand. But I do know this. that if I follow the Lord and I plug into Him and listen to Him... He'll help me believe him for the things that he wants to do in the situation. Amen? And so um, you really need a word. And so many times I've asked Christians when they're looking for a miracle or something to happen in their life or a friend of their life, I'll say, well, what Bible verses has God given you? And so many times I hear, I don't know. And I'm like, well, what are you standing on then? Like, are you standing on another pastor what he preached? Like, are you, are you standing on something else that happened in your past? You, know, you have to stand on God's word for this situation right now. The same kind of revelation that Peter had. The same kind of revelation that says, listen, I don't care what the rest of these disciples think. I don't care what the world thinks. Jesus, I know you're real. I don't care what my church thinks, although that can be important too. I, you know, I don't care what the world thinks. I know that God wants to do this in my life. He gave me a scripture, and I'm going to stand on it. Amen? Believing God for a miracle starts there. It starts there. And he does miraculous things. Um, Hebrews 11, 1 through 2 says this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things unseen. For by it the elders obtain a great testimony. By faith. Somebody say by faith. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen are not made of things which are visible. That's a crazy awesome scripture. Things that are seen are not made of things that are visible. How does that do as far as contradicting what the world believes? You know? Everything comes from something. No, that's not true. Because there's a spiritual realm that you can't see, and it's birthed there, and then it manifests here in the earth. Amen? And I love this scripture because it says, it says, the evidence of things not seen. See, that scripture is the evidence of what you need for what you can't see right now. Right? I can't see being feeling healed from the stomach issue I'm in. But I know what the Word said, and I know that God gave me a Bible verse for this, and a promise to stand on. So that's the evidence of what is going to happen. And Hebrews 11 is so cool. Because you can go right down what they call the heroes of faith. Because it says, by it the elders obtain a great testimony. There's tons of them here. But my two favorite I'm going to hit really quickly. Noah and Abraham. I think Noah because... They, when, when God said that, you know, there's going to be a flood, there wasn't even rain at that point. It all came up from the ground. So can you imagine what that must have been like? God's like, hey, I'm going to have water come from the sky. I'm like, what? Water doesn't come from the sky. Water comes from up here, you know? And he says, I want you to build a boat. Did they even have boats then? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know enough about that part to maybe need to look it up. But I think the no boat might have been better an invention, uh, a new invention or something. I don't know. God says, build this big, huge ark. I don't know how big it was, but it's probably about as big as this right here. Easy, right? Huge ark. Can you imagine what his friend said about that? Dude's too far short of a happy meal. He's building a house that floats. You know? He's crazy. Can you? And, and it wasn't like, I, I haven't done a priest. I, it's been a while since I preached on that. I wasn't planning on going there. But it was years and years and years of no rain. There's no evidence. Listen, listen, Noah, there's no ever evidence that it's going to rain. 
All right, listen, it, it has been like, the sun has been shining since I can, well, maybe it's shining, but you know, since I can remember, you know? Like, there's no evidence to say that rain is ever going to come from the sky. And then it does, because he's, he's faithful. He did, his evidence of what was going to happen didn't come from the world and what he saw with his earthly eyes, but it came from his Father and what he sent spiritually speaking. Amen? And so that was the evidence of what was unseen. Amen? And then you look at Abraham. You know, he's old, way too old to have a son. And God says, you're going to have a son. He, and Sarah, she's way too old to have a, a son. And the Bible says that he didn't even consider his age. He didn't even she, he didn't consider her age. You know, the older I get, the more I consider my age. You know, these punks that want to challenge me in basketball. Back in the day, man, I could just jump over them. Now I look at the bottom of the net, I think, that's going to hurt. You know, and I had this one guy challenge me re recently, you know, and I can't, this knee, like I said, he yells at me once in a while. I can only play on one foot. I still beat him, but I considered what it was going to do to me the next day, and it wasn't worth it. <laughs> I heard there's a young guy in youth group that wants to do this, and the ball hoop is there, so I don't know what I'm going to do, Dennis. Maybe you can get my back. Just leave Jeff alone. He, he's okay. Yeah, well, we'll see how that works. Dennis is too short. Yeah, but he's big on the inside. Remember, I say that all the time. I consider my body, you know, what I can actually do. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's, he, Abraham didn't even consider his body. You know what considering is like? We consider all the possible outcomes that don't line up sometimes with what God is telling us. We consider those instead of considering what God has said. See, that's the evidence of things that aren't seen. Amen? And your miracle is something that you can't see with your natural eyes. But if you're spiritually connected to God, and you know what he wants to do in that situation, that's the evidence of things not seen. Amen? Amen. Um, and I want to end with this. In Matthew 8, 5 through 16, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to start here next week. But it's the story of the centurion. I just love this. It's one of my favorite accounts in the Bible, the healing. It says, Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed and dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. That's the coolest thing ever. Because Jesus, you know, he said, Jesus says, hey, I'll come to your church and we'll have a healing service. And then the healing service, you know, we'll see some people get healed, right? And the centurion says, I don't need that. You know, Jesus, I don't need you to come to my home and pray. There was more to that because he was a Gentile, but it doesn't, doesn't matter. He says, I don't need, he says, this is what I need from you, Jesus. Just one thing. Just give me a word. All I need is a word. He says, I know what authority is like. I tell one to go, and he goes. I tell another one to come, and he comes. And basically what he's saying to Jesus is, Jesus, you tell a demon to go, it's going to go. You tell uh, sickness to go, it's going to go. If you tell healing to come, have healing come. He says, I, I'm not worried about all that. All I need is a word. And what does Jesus do? Jesus did his part, right? And says, okay. But with the hard part that's hard for us as Christians to swallow is the very last thing that Jesus says. Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Jesus says, I did my part. I believe, this, the, here's the word. This is what I'm willing to do. Now I need you to do your part. As you have believed. And it's true for us today, too, isn't it? As we believe. Amen? Um, and, and it's that faith that God uses. Amen? Um, so he said, just speak a word. That's what we really need. We need to get that word from God. I want to end with this. I know I've told this story a few times, but it seems like that we've had a lot of new visitors, all the different services, so I'm telling some of these stories because, honestly, they're miraculous stories. It's something I hope that I can write about to, to pass on to my kids and grandkids and great kids, grandkids of the great things that God is doing. But I'll never forget when um, one day I just somebody in our church came to me and said, what's it going to take to get the kitchen going? And at that point, the kitchen was that 70s kitchen. It was yellow. I mean, the sinks were... Say, you want to say that 40s kitchen? <laughs> it could have been. <laughs> we had a dishwasher in there. I don't know what it, how it worked, but it was a little crazy looking. It was round, you know? And, um, you know, when you don't have much, you just do with what you got. And I thought, well, 
probably for five thousand dollars we could just fix it. You know, so that's why I said we could probably fix it for about five thousand dollars. And she said, Well, I don't think that that's going to be a problem. And I thought that was it. And but I remember just I can't remember if it was that day or a couple of days later. One of our prayer intercessors came to me and she said, Jeff, this is really important. I need you to, to, to remember this. And she said, God told us about something that's supposed to happen, but the old needs to go and the new needs to come in. Out with the old, in with the new. And I thought, oh boy. On the inside, I'm like, oh, that's the kitchen. And for me, I'm thinking, there's another project. You know, here we go. You know? So we started talking. We put a little group together, a little board together, and we. We kind of worked with the health department. Stan was involved. A lot of the guys were involved, and we came up with this plan, and we found out that it would cost probably about $30,000. That's a lot of money, especially for us. You know, that's a lot of money. And uh, God says, God, but God said, I'll be the old, never the new, you know. And um, so i never forget, it was a Wednesday, because I know Wednesday is food pantry day. It's one of our busiest days. And I was driving home from the supermarket, and I, well, actually, just before that, I had gone to um, a foundation. They had helped us actually buy this building because this building was basically donated to us. And, and um, she had told me before that if we ever come up with a big project, to go talk with her because, you know, her foundation knew other foundations that might be able to jump in and help. They really liked what we were doing for the community. So I sat down and kind of talked to her about this vision that God had given us about how we wanted to start doing lunches and, and dinners and how there was a huge need for that, you know. And um, so she said, boy, let me make some phone calls, and if anything pops up, I'll let you know. And so I was driving home from the supermarket, and I got a text. I don't get texts from her um, much or phone calls at all. And I got a text from her, and, and it said, you know, in the text, it said, hey, Jeff, um, the uh, president of a certain bank is going to be in town next Wednesday, and I really think that they might be interested in helping your church fund that project. And um, I thought, oh, cool. So I just I – just, you know, text her, that sounds great to me, just let me know. And, and then she called me, and that's way out of the ordinary. And she called me and said, Jeff, I don't know what I was thinking. He's, he's actually in the city right now, and I think I can arrange a meeting with you guys, like right now. Can we come over? And what am I going to say? No, sorry. You know, but I'm like, yeah, come on over. Meanwhile, I'm on the phone with Stu because it's a busy day. The place is full, and I'm like, hey, can we do some cleaning up and stuff? And, you know, and uh, I met them right out front just a few minutes later, and we walked through the building, and we went into there, and um, she's asking me questions. She told me before that she would ask me certain questions because she kind of knew the things he was looking for and that she would help me, guide me through that, you know. And So he's asking me questions and all that stuff. And we get to right about where Mary Alice and, and Rich are sitting. And um, she just stopped and, you know, she, she said um, something along the lines of, you know, we're, our foundation just decided that we were just going to give them $10,000 $10, toward their project. What, what do you think about doing the same? Like, we'll give them 10, and you give them 10. You know, buy one, get one free kind of idea kind of thing, you know. And he just looked at her and said, okay. I'm like, okay. And so we just went from thirty to $20,000. I'm like, okay, you know, whatever, you know. And then um, I went to you guys, and, and I told you guys, we've got to raise ten grand, which is a lot. It's still a lot, right? And then when we got done with the project, I think it was thirty five or 36 it was up there, right? And um, you guys raised... 15 or 16 over the top of all of that. You know, that's, see, God had a plan. It wasn't our plan. It wasn't necessarily what we wanted, although we like to be used in that way. But that was something that God wanted to do. And I remember when I first came to the building for the very first time to look at this building about maybe moving over here. And I had a really strong emotion in me of, of holding back tears because I felt like God wanted to use this building to be a blessing to the community. And it all kind of lined up. See, God had a plan. And we just hooked in with his plan. And what would happen, I'm not sure. We, we don't have all the answers. And if you think you do, well, boy, let me know. Let's have a meeting because i got some questions for you. I'm just kidding. We don't have all the answers. I don't, I don't get it. But, but what would have happened if we were like, you know, that's just too much. Let's just do the five grand. You know, I don't, I don't know what would have happened. Would he, you know, kick me out and put a real pastor in here that would listen to him and do what he says? I don't know. Would he have had another church do it? I don't know. I, I don't know the answers to that, but I do know this. We, as a church and a community, walk by faith. Because that was not easy. That was hard. 
Amen? So I want to encourage you, don't be afraid to believe God for a miracle. Amen? Because it's those miracles that do really great testimonies. Nobody can argue with your testimony. They can argue about theology. They can argue about Bible verses. They can argue about